Today Movie Workshop, I'm Peter and joining you from a different seat today. I'm going to be your host and uh, I can just let you know the flow of the day. So we're going to uh, start with a movie with David and then afterwards uh, we'll take a 10 minute break. Then we have our breakout rooms where we can share our emotions or anything that came up for us during the movie. Afterwards, uh, we'll have a 45 minute break and then um, followed by a closing session where um, I'll be hosting the closing session today. And uh, we can go a little bit deeper into anything that came up. So to start with, I'm going to pass it over to David now. Hi everyone, welcome. <laughs> oh, so good to see you all. We have a, a beautiful movie today and we have some beautiful topics to help us with our healing. And I'm very excited about today because um, it's always interesting for me to watch the, the themes that receive uh, the most votes and then just to pray as the week goes on to see what Jesus is going to give us all. And we all are always in for such a treat <laughs> with the combination of the themes and the movie that is given us. So today we had a combined movie poll that uh, the top theme received so many votes, received uh, 94 votes, almost 19 votes more than all the rest. So this movie is a direct opportunity to really go deeply into our first theme. And that is our, our lead theme, we'll call it, staying present when darkness is moving through. I know all of us, really appreciate knowing how to stay present when the darkness is moving through. Because when darkness comes up, it can feel so scattered. You can feel so much fear or guilt, anxiety. You can feel overwhelming emotions, tears. Uh, the emotional intenseness of darkness moving through consciousness as it's being brought up into awareness for release is probably one of the most practical topics that we could ever address. Because as we know with the Course in Miracles, Jesus is telling us we have to go through the darkness to the light. So we really need to know how to stay present when the darkness is moving through. Coming in second was opening to healing on a deeper level. Most of us have grown up and we have been raised with this idea of healing on a very personal level. When we have an ailment that seems to be related to our body, when we have a physical symptom, uh, healing comes into the forefront of our mind when we are struggling emotionally with uh, depression or anxiety or panic attacks, then healing is something that's on the forefront of our mind. But we usually don't think about healing too much until we're presented with an extreme form of sickness. And then healing pops into our mind and it pops into our prayers. We're like, please God, heal me. I'm, heal me of this emotional or physical experience that I'm going through. And that becomes the forefront of our thoughts. So opening to healing on a deeper level is opening to a healing about our identity. It's not that we're trying to pray to God to heal our personality self or our body because Jesus is telling us in the course, he says, don't ask the Holy Spirit to heal the body. Ask the Holy Spirit to heal your perception of the body because the body is part of the per ego's perception of the world. And it's, it's just a, 
a part, a tiny piece of our perception of all of the cosmos of time and space. And when we focus on healing the body, we don't realize that the body is not sick. It's the lens that we're looking through that is perceiving a fragmented world. That's what's sick. Our perception is sick because the ego invented our perception. It's what the Course calls wrong-mindedness. That's what sickness is. Sickness actually has nothing to do with the body at all. It has really nothing to do with time and space. It's a misperception in the mind of perceiving the world in a fragmented way instead of the holistic way of the Holy Spirit and Jesus. So when you pray for healing, that's what really you're praying for at a much deeper level. You're saying, Holy Spirit, Jesus, heal my mind. I'm looking at a crazy, wacky world. It's cracked. My perception is cracked. <laughs> I have a cracked perception of the world, a, a split perception, a fragmented perception. I'm not seeing as the Holy Spirit sees. With the ego, I'm seeing everything is fragmented. Everything is broken into pieces. Almost like if you had a giant mirror, a cosmic mirror, and you put pressure on that cosmic mirror, and all of a sudden, it started to splinter and shatter into trillions and trillions of little bits and pieces. That would be a description of fragmented perception. And that's what's sick. Our mind that perceives a fragmented world is what the sickness is. So when we have a theme called opening to healing on a deeper level, we're really praying, show me first of all, help me remember first of all that I have a perceptual problem because I cannot accept the solution for the problem if I misdefine the problem. If I think I have a sick body, I am mistaken. My perception is sick. If I think my cat is sick, I have a perception. That, that's a problem too, but it's a perceptual problem. <laughs> If I think I have a flat tire, my car is sick. It is a flat tire. No, Jesus is always with us laughing, reminding us, no, it's a perceptual problem. And some of you are very familiar with workbook lessons 79 and 80. Number 79 is, let me recognize the problem so it can be solved. And then lesson number 80 in the workbook is, let me recognize my problems have been solved. Already they are solved, but Jesus is telling us in the workbook, even if you have the answer, which you do, the Holy Spirit, it's not going to help you at all if you miss to find the problem. <laughs> it's like saying, uh, okay, I, uh, I've got the solution, and it, for instance, it, it looks like a, a it looks like a, a we'll say a, a cylinder. And uh, Jesus is like, well, even if you have a cylinder as a solution, if, you're, if you have a, a square peg or, a, or a, a triangular hole, the cylinder won't fit in the triangular hole. You know, it won't do you any good. Uh, if, if you needed to hammer a nail into a hard piece of maple or oak wood and somebody gave you a, a screwdriver, you'd say, well, actually that's not very helpful. And they, oh, I got a feather instead. And they, oh, the feather's not gonna work either. I need a hammer. And what he's telling us is the Holy Spirit is the correction, but as long as you think you have physical problems, as long as you think you have financial problem, as long as you think you have interpersonal relationship issues, as long as you think you have an issue with the, the ecosystem of earth, you think with the pollution <laughs> or with traffic or with the pandemic, Jesus is like, 
No, 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 no. That's not it. It's a perceptual problem. The problem is in your mind. And that's why you can be healed instantly is just through the recognition that first the admission, I have, a, I have a perceptual problem and then quickly accepting the immediate solution of the Holy Spirit, which is given you. As soon as you admit honestly that you have a perceptual problem. So sometimes people say, I've heard you say this, David, hundreds of times over the years, thousands of times, but I still don't get what you mean by I have a perceptual problem. Well, today's movie will help you grasp the understanding of that because today's movie is going to be about schizophrenia. It's going to take a look at a psychotic episode um, we're going to see the hallucination of imaginary characters uh, that are generated from the mind. Um, some of you may have even heard of multiple personality, which uh, uh, is technical term is uh, DID, um, dissociative identity disorder. And in DID, what it is, is each of the alters in the, the multiple personality perception, each alter has seemingly a mind of their own, has, has its, their own physical characteristics and so forth. If you've ever watched the movie Sybil or uh, what was the one that came out more recently? Split, yeah, it was this much more recent uh, trilogy, actually, the split it was three movies. And um, some of you know Bob Rosenthal, too, who's the, the co-president of the Foundation for Inner Peace. Uh, he's, he's written some beautiful pieces on DID as it relates to A Course in Miracles. But the entire projected world is an example of DID all the characters that you perceive in your world, including the one you think you are, each seem to have a mind of their own, thoughts of their own, their own personality, their own personal history, their own ambitions and goals, their own emotions. And this is what I mean by a perceptual problem. <laughs> it's, it's fragmented. Now you may say, David, I have not been diagnosed with DID. Uh, that's right, your character is part of the DID. <laughs> your dream character is part of the dissociative identity disorder. You forgot that you're the Christ, that you're spirit. And now the character that you seem to be watching every day and believing that you are is part of a mind dissociative identity disorder. I'm not saying that you personally are diagnosed like, like Sybil, with uh, multiple personalities. I'm saying the sleeping mind that has forgotten that it's one with God, that has forgotten that it's the Christ, is going through a dissociative identity disorder and it has dissociated the Christ and now it has accepted an egoic substitute called the personality self and the fragmented world as its identity. So this is a major identity distortion. How major? You, we can't even imagine how far the fall from grace of being one with God and then perceiving yourself as an individual identity. We did a little skit uh, recently was COVID. What was it? Concept of vast individual delusion concept of vast individual delusions. The next time someone tries to get into an argument with you about COVID, COVID and whether you should get vaccinated or not, say, oh no, I'm not working on that question of whether to vaccinate or not. I'm working on COVID, C-O-V-I-D, the concept of vast individual uh, identity uh, delusions. That's COVID. That's what you're working on. 
The course is the perfect answer for COVID. And I'm not talking about the pandemic here. I'm talking about the, I, the forgetting, the amnesia of forgetting that you're one with God and believing you're separate from God. That is, is much more uh, deep than, than the pandemic, which is just on the surface of consciousness. So don't get distracted about whether to vaccinate or not. We're going much deeper now. We're going into the identity distortions. The third theme in the poll is committing to the Holy Spirit, listen and follow. And this is why we're always, I, we're just emphasizing guidance because guidance is your direct link to your higher self and to the Holy Spirit. Guidance is the most practical tool to help unwind your mind from the ego and release yourself to remember that you're the Christ. And that comes into listen and follow. So we're used to listening to many voices. Uh, we're used to listening to maybe family, friends, coworkers, bosses, colleagues, children, parents, uh, neighbors, and we listen to what everybody has to say, and then we have to decide what we're going to do, usually after we've uh, talked to a number of other people. This is not really a good problem-solving uh, direction. Listening to the Holy Spirit is, is going to get you into the awakened state in a very direct way. But if you're just listening to the advice and opinions of people on the news, on the radio, on the internet, or to family and friends that are constantly giving advice, you're going to feel very confused. And the reason you're confused is because it's schizophrenia. You're listening to characters that aren't even there, <laughs> that are just acting out the unconscious thoughts and beliefs in the mind. And for many of us, this is a shocking discovery. Again, I'm not saying that you personally have gone to a psychologist or psychiatrist and have been diagnosed with schizophrenia. I'm saying that the character that you're looking at and all the characters you're looking at are part of a mental schizophrenic state and that the sleeping mind that is the mind that believes in the ego is definitely schizophrenic it is generating people and characters that aren't there you don't have three imaginary friends like in the movie from years ago a beautiful mind with the famous mathematician john nash <laughs> which was a beautiful movie because it brought into awareness this condition of schizophrenia, which most people are not that familiar with, unless you happen to be a psychologist, a psychiatrist, a counselor, or unless you have somebody in your family or you yourself have experienced schizophrenia, most people are like freaked out by schizophrenia. Like that's, that is freakish. What do you mean? They have to deal with imaginary characters in their life that aren't really there. Listen, we're dealing with this every day. There are 7 billion imaginary characters that have been generated by the ego just on planet Earth alone. I'm not even talking about other planets. I'm not talking about the angels. I'm not talking about the aliens, ET. I'm just talking on Earth alone. We've got 7 billion imaginary characters that are just running around in the ego mind. And they're all just generations of beliefs and thoughts that the ego made up. You may say that that's a little extreme. You're saying that the human condition is schizophrenic by nature. That's exactly what I'm saying. And I'm saying that as the Course teaches, Jesus tells us God did not create the body because the body is temporal and 
God and spirit are eternal. You don't get temporary creatures from an eternal being. God did not create the world. God did not create time and space. God did not create the bodies. This is a schizophrenic condition. And this movie is going to help us deal with this today because this movie, like that movie, A Beautiful Mind, will really bring it home of what it's like to deal with dark thoughts, to deal with an unconscious mind of darkness, to deal with all these characters that aren't really there, and to deal with all the emotions that come up when we perceive these characters. So this movie is, is a pure gem. Uh, the fourth one, the fourth theme is discernment between the egos and the spirit's use of words. Most of us are very accustomed to the human condition and the human race. And so we think of words as, as language and as communication. Jesus tells us that words are a very crude form of communication, that he says, in your natural state in the kingdom of heaven, there are no words. Everything is telepathically known. All you know is love, and you don't even need words because love is everything. <laughs> even the Beatles told us love is all you need, and they were pointing towards the kingdom of heaven and nirvana. But in this world, Jesus tells us words are symbols of symbols twice removed from reality. So in our schizophrenic sleeping state of mind, we are using words very crudely because they're representative of the thoughts and the beliefs and concepts that we hold in our mind. For most people, you know, we think of words as conversation. I had a conversation and Jesus would say, well, the com it's not so important that you have a conversation. It's actually the purpose for which you have the conversation that's important. Like he says in the workbook, a telephone is for reaching someone who's not in your proximity. But then he says, the real question you should ask yourself is what do I want to reach him for? He's not interested in the words that you speak. He's interested in the purpose that's, in, that's either inspiring the words from the Holy Spirit or uh, the ego is using words just to maintain and reinforce itself. So we need to discern between the ego's use of words and the Holy Spirit's use of words. In the upcoming movie, which we're going to see very shortly, there is a there is a, a priest uh, named Father Patrick, and this is beautiful because he's a pretty open-minded priest, and he's a good listener, and he's funny, and he's got a beautiful heart, and, and he's going to be the helper character in this movie. He's, he's like our, our Holy Spirit helper, Father Patrick. And Father Patrick is going to be an example to us of, of more of a helpful use of words. A lot of the characters, uh, it will be the ego, the darkness using the words. And that's why the human condition is so confusing at times. It's because the ego is the one that is using the words. And that's why things can seem very dark and heavy, very sad at times for us as we go through this journey is because we still haven't freed our mind from identifying with the ego and the ego uses words in a very dark way. And finally, the last theme is facing the fear of loss and loneliness. Why is there such a fear of loss and loneliness? It's because with this schizophrenic condition in which the ego has peopled the world and put all these characters there, every single mind that identifies with the body is 
going to experience depression. Jesus tells us that in the Course, that he says, when you equate yourself with the body, you must experience depression. Why? It's because we're spirit, and spirit is our natural state of happiness and joy and love. But as we equate ourselves with the body, we experience depression and sadness. We also experience guilt, anxiety, shame, many other emotions. And none of them are happy emotions, but they all come from one thing, from a body identification. Now, in this movie, our main character, is his name is Adam. Some of you did see that movie, A Beautiful Mind. I see our Tabula Rasa group there. Hi, Tabula Rasa Mystery School group. You saw A Beautiful Mind, uh, I believe this week. Lisa showed A Beautiful Mind. And in that movie, uh, the main character was John Nash, was, uh, was this amazing uh, Nobel laureate uh, mathematician who was diagnosed with schizophrenia and he had to deal with three imaginary characters and he got married. I think some of you remember Jennifer Connelly uh, played his wife in the movie. And he also developed uh, a cooperative um, theory of dynamics, group dynamics and, and dynamics. So he was a brilliant mind, a brilliant mathematician, and yet he had to deal with schizophrenia. And I think that movie, of all movies I've ever seen, that brought the awareness of, of the diagnosis of schizophrenia, what it really is, into awareness for many moviegoers all over the world. Today's movie, the main character, his name is Adam. You gotta love it, Adam. When you go to the Bible and you go to Genesis, the first book in the Bible, what's the first human being ever mentioned in the Bible? Adam, <laughs> the first one. And now Jesus is showing us a movie where the main character is Adam. I have to say, I think Jesus is saying, listen, you guys, ever since the first human being, which was a projection, <laughs> <laughs> of, of a false mind. Uh, God didn't create Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve were projections uh, of, of a deluded mind. Because why? Because oneness is one. Spirit is spirit. Love is love. And as soon as you get Adam and Eve, and then we get all the begats, you know, begat, 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 begat in the Bible. Well, there's a lot of begats. A lot of procreation going on, a lot of children, Cain and Abel, and some of us know our biblical literature, it just goes on and on. Now we're up to 7 billion. Good Lord, what a schizophrenic state. We're up to 7 billion hallucinations, and no wonder we can't find the answer of peace of mind in the hallucination is because you don't. You don't solve schizophrenia by tinkering with the characters or by tinkering with the planet or the cosmos, you have to accept the atonement in your mind. And that's what the Course in Miracles is doing. It's saying, oh, I'm going to make it so simple for you now. I'm going to show you how to release the schizophrenia of, of the ego, all these hallucinations of characters that aren't even there. Some of you say, well, wait a minute, that's pretty radical. Remember, Theme number two is opening to healing on a deeper level. What does that mean, David, on a deeper level? Well, let's just refer to Workbook Lesson 132. And if you go down inside of that lesson, you will see Jesus say the phrase, the sentence, there is no world, period. He says it in lesson 132. He comes right out. He doesn't mince any words. He comes out in lesson 132 and says, there is no world, period. Now, that's a good reference point for deeper healing because if you're just trying to heal persons and you're trying to heal countries and you're trying to heal things like um, 
like pollution or the pandemic or racial tensions or sexual tensions, listen, you're not even close to healing. That's so far on the surface that, uh, you know, we've had the United Nations existing for years, decades, the United Nations. And did the United Nations help us with our ontological belief in separation? No, the United Nations has not solved the ontological belief in separation from God. Has medical research done it? No. Has philosophers done it? No. Psychologists? No. Education, education, teaching, education is the answer. No, nada, nada, nada. Education hasn't even made a dent in the ontological belief in separation from God. You want some education? I'll give you some education. Here we go. This is education. This is education to release schizophrenia of the mind. And while we're at it, we've already talked about DID and schizophrenia. Let's, let's go for psychosis too. Psychosis. What is psychosis is a break from reality. When a, a human being is diagnosed as being psychotic, they tend to have experiences and visions that don't fit in the norm of the bell curve of the human race. And in this movie, our, our Adam, our main character, he's going to, he's going to have a, a psychotic episode in his, his senior class of, of chemistry. He's in his chemistry class. He's going to have a psychotic episode where he will lose touch with what the world calls reality. But remember, what the world calls reality is just your everyday experiences as a human being. What Jesus calls reality is eternal spirit. And when you forget eternal spirit and believe that you're a time-space creature, that's a psychotic break, a, a much more significant <laughs> psychotic break than things being out of the norm, the normal patterns of human being. That's a psychotic break from, from reality. And I'm talking reality with a capital R. You know, we, we have a bad habit in this world of referring to reality as time and space. Even new age teachers, even teachers who teach the secret or manifesting, they will teach you can create your own reality. And they're referring to reality as the perceptual world. That's not it. Even when people say, well, that's a, a, new, a new thought thing too. You, you, we, can create, we can create our reality. No, we can't. God is the creator of reality. And A Course in Miracles in this sense is not new age at all. It's not the slightest bit new age because the new age teaches that you can use your thoughts to create reality in time and space. And Jesus is saying, quite frankly, that's impossible because spirit's already been created. It's already perfect. And you cannot create spirit in form because spirit is not form. Form is of the ego. If, you, if you're concerned about whether that's pure course, go read the Beyond All Idols section of A Course in Miracles where Jesus says, God knows not form. Ooh, we can put those lines together. Beyond all idol, God knows not form and lesson 132 inside of it where he says there is no world. Ooh, you can start to realize that what we think of as the human condition is a schizophrenic, psychotic, DID experience, if we use those terms from psychology and psychiatry, and it's in the mind. We're not saying that the, all human beings exhibit these characteristics. We're saying the mind that perceives this world of linear and time and space, yes, is psychotic, it's schizophrenic, and it's DID. 
and I could go on. There's, there's some other ones too, but I'm just going to stop right there. I don't want you to be too depressed before we start the movie. <laughs> Remember, this movie's about happiness and joy and healing, but I'm just kind of giving you a context. So, so there's some kind of context for what, what we're going to see. So in this movie, our main character is Adam. He's 18 years old. He's, he's in his senior year of high school. Uh, he lives with his mother and we'll see that his father has left, left the picture. So he's being raised by a single parent, by his mother. And, and she's just doing the best job she can as single mothers do. And, and she will end up getting a, a boyfriend in the movie, Paul, who will move into the house. And the character that will be used by the Holy Spirit to help Adam, our main character, with his, um, his difficulties of navigating in, through life in high school is going to be uh, his, his, his girlfriend. She'll turn into his girlfriend, and I love it. Adam was the first name of the first human being in the Bible, in Genesis. But instead of Eve, his girlfriend will be Maya. Maya. Oh, Jesus is having some fun with these characters. Anytime you think you have a relationship issue with anyone on planet Earth, just remember your issue is with Maya. <laughs> this is God, this is too good. Too good. The main character is named after the first human being ever, and his girlfriend is named Maya. And Jesus is, he thinks this is a comedy movie, but but this is a very deep healing movie, I will assure you. you know. And uh, and then of the his mother, uh, uh, her boyfriend, Paul, he's kind of an interesting character, too. He's kind of like Paul in, in Christianity, Paul in the Bible. Some of his theology wasn't always so good. Everybody were a little concerned about Paul and his, uh, his theology of sacrifice. But actually, we have a Paul character in here. And, and this movie is about exposing private thoughts. This movie is about exposing secrets. This movie is about what do you do when the darkness comes up and you start hearing those dark voices in your mind that, that are always putting you down, that are always telling you that you're no good. Um, and, and then on top of the darkness coming up into awareness, which is a major uh, issue that everyone faces on planet earth the, he has three imaginary characters and uh, one of them is called Rebecca and she's very kind of airy fairy she's kind of angelic and new agey and she's always super positive and super uh, loving and then He's got another imaginary character in this movie that is like, uh, he's like the protector. Uh, he's the bodyguard. Imagine if you had an imaginary character that you were generating from your mind that was your bodyguard, always looking out for you to protect you. And this guy carries a baseball bat and he has a cigar in his mouth. I mean, he's like a thug. He's like a real thug, always there in, in your scenes to protect you. So we got the airy, fairy, angelic uh, one character. We got the, the bodyguard, the thug. And then to throw it in, you, this is a teenage boy, remember, he's Adam. He's got his, his sexual fantasies played out in, a, in a, a man who's kind of like focused on sexual obsession. So <laughs> what, what a combination of imaginary uh, characters that this teenager has generated from his schizophrenic condition. The bodyguard, the airy-fairy, angelic uh, Rebecca, 
And then this other character who is always into sexual obsession. Everything is sexual with him. <laughs> Those are, those are interesting archetypes to, to have projected as your, uh, as your imaginary characters. Now, a lot of us, we probably could go back through our life and we could come up with our own bodyguard, <laughs> sexual uh, obsession and angelic characters uh, that we have. And so this movie is gonna be really helpful for us because if you have to deal with this on pretty much a daily basis, um, it's enough to deal with the characters that, that seem to see each other. But if you have imaginary characters, like a whole other layer on top of that, plus your emotions, plus your hormones. And I don't know, do you, any of you remember the high school days? Can any of you remember back to when you were in high school? What a trip, what a trip. I can't even believe I made it through high school. What a trip. You know, you've got your hormones going, you've got your the rules and structures of the, of the school, the principal, and you know, you've got teachers writing detention slips and, and teachers that carry paddles and they'll smack you, they'll actually hit you uh, if you do something bad. And then you've got to deal with the emotions of relationships. Oh my God, teenage relationships. My God, how did we make it? How did we make it? We, it was a miracle that we made, it. we made it out of high school. Well, we're going to revisit those days because this is not John Nash. Uh, this isn't a professor in Princeton. We're going to see schizophrenia through the eyes of an 18 year old boy who is trying to handle all of the pressures and emotions of high school. And there's a lot. And then you're gonna see, throw the schizophrenia on top of that. And then throw the psychotic episode that he has in his, uh, his chemistry class. Whoa, he's got a lot on his plate. He's gonna help us really get in touch with what's going on in our mind. Maybe we've repressed it, but now it's gonna come up during this movie because whatever we've been dealing with, he's dealing with in the extreme. And that's gonna help all of us learn to release the ego because sometimes we need extreme examples. And this is definitely a very, very extreme example. So today's one of those movies where you definitely wanna keep all of your fingers on the carpet uh, because the buttons are going to get pushed today because you're going to be watching a teenager who's very witty, he's very sincere. I think he's, he's actually quite funny. You're gonna be able to relate to this main character, Adam, and he's going to show you what's going on inside of the mind. He's going to act it out for all of us to help us get in touch with whatever we denied from awareness, he's going to show. I see Maria there. You've got a son, Augustine. You know, you know what uh, teens are, and, and young ch children go through, and because you you deal with with it with your son. Well, now you're going to get to see this acted out with Adam and his relationship with Maya and his relationship with mom and his relationship with her boyfriend, Paul, and his, his teachers. This movie goes after peer pressure. You know, if we thought it was hard to fit in in high school, imagine having schizophrenia and, and feeling the pressure of all these eyes looking at you, like, why are you so strange? And why don't you fit in? So he's going to act out for all of us, all the intensities of the human race just for us to have a healing. So sit back, enjoy the ride today. I will come on for some commentary from time to time and let's let the Holy Spirit unravel the whole human condition today. Let's, let's take a ride for all of us because when one is healed, everyone is healed. And when we go through and face the unconscious mind, 
in a, in a direct way. It's intense, but I'll tell you, you come out on the other side of it all and you're smiling in the happy dream. You come soaring with the Holy Spirit into the light and you leave the darkness behind forever. And that's what this movie is going to help us with today. So enjoy the movie. I'll be 